Hey guys, welcome to a revision video this time. Now, these topics that we're covering today, mean, median, moan, range, I've talked about at length in the year seven statistics video. So, because these are such important concepts and you're gonna be looking at them pretty much all through statistics in school, I wanna just do an extra video more so to just keep you guys thinking about these, almost like I'm conditioning you to remember these and take these as important because you're gonna be building on these four concepts a lot in future years. So I really want to just take a chance to redefine these and think about how you can classify these measures of statistics, as well as doing a question just so we can remember how to actually use all of these and what we're looking for when we're doing our working out. Now, all of these four, I'm gonna go through quickly and just define these, and then I'm gonna put them on this table in which we are, they, they pretty much show the two categories of these four statistical measures. Now, the mean, I'm gonna go through it a bit quicker. So a mean is a strategy, a mathematical way of finding the middle. So it's also been called the average and we get it by adding together all our terms, all data terms, and dividing this by the number of data terms. So what this averaging process does is we take a bunch of numbers, we add them together, then divide them by the amount of numbers, and that gives us an approximation, a rough idea of where the middle of all of these points is. So if you were to average, for example, five and seven, Adding these two together and dividing them by the amount of terms there are, here we get 12 divided by two gives me six. And you can see this value of six lies smack bang in the middle of five and seven. Now, as we add more numbers and as we get less nice numbers, we are gonna be getting these a lot of decimal points and these not so nice whole numbers, but the most important thing to note is that averaging is a process of finding the middle. So this procedure that we just did of averaging five and seven, this process gives us a number that is between five and seven. If we looked at this on a number line, you would get five, then six, then seven. So this six is the average. Now, that's all we need to know for that one. And whoa, not that. Let's talk about the median now. The median, a good way to describe median is essentially the middle point of our data. So if we order the data, if this is numbers, for example, so here we are dealing with numerical data, that's our category. This median is the middle value, value when the data, data values, are ordered smallest to largest. That's pretty much what our median is. It's the middle value. So as we, as we look at numbers, humans generally, we like to look at it in a way that is nice on the eyes and that makes sense. So we're gonna often rearrange these data points, these numbers, in a 
smaller to larger order in an ascending order from smallest to largest. And when we arrange these, the median is our middle value. So if we had, for example, let's shift this down a little bit and move this D over. If we had, for example, the numbers two, three, four, seven, nine, the median is the number smack bang in the middle. This is our median. And we know it's in the middle because we have two values to the left and two values to the right. It is right in the middle of our five numbers. Now, the mode, this thing, and just a reminder, this is a revision lesson. I'm gonna hopefully work through this a little bit quicker. The mode is the most frequent data value. So if we have a set of numbers, say these were heights, for example, of a classroom, the mode is going to be the most, the number that comes up the most, the most frequent. So if, for example, we go with this height example again, let's say I measured, I don't know, five students. One was 177, one was 178, one was, another one was 178, 170, 170, and 173. Now these aren't ordered, but with mode, it doesn't really matter whether they're in ascending or descending order. We are just looking at the number that occurs the most, the most frequent. So if I count how many numbers of each there are, there's one, 177, one, 170, and one, 173, but there are two 178s. So this number here, 178, is the mode. It's the number that occurs the most, the data point that occurs the most. And finally, the range. This is, whoops. My range is essentially the how it tells us how big our data set is, what numbers it ranges to, where it starts and where it finishes. It kind of tells us the total scope of these data points. So the range, it's the measure of where the data starts and ends. How big is our data set? And ends. So if I give myself a bit of space here, and I'll move this down. Very good. Now, our range tells us the span of the data. How, how far, how many numbers does it encompass? So if we take these numbers here, 170, 173, the same examples from before, 177, 178, 178, we're considering where it starts, the lowest value, lowest value, as well as the highest value. We're looking for how many numbers or what is the amount, the value contained within my data. And we get this, we find our range by, think about it, if you wanted the, the, the distance or the amount of numbers between 170 and 178, you would be finding the difference between the maximum value and the minimum value, the highest and the lowest. 
And to find the difference between two numbers, we subtract. So we find our highest value and we subtract from that our lowest value. So with this particular data set of the heights in a class, to find the range, I'm going to be taking 178, my highest number, and subtracting my lowest number, 170, and I get eight. So eight is the range of my data. It pretty much tells us how far our data is spread out. And it's spread out across, for example, if we're looking at heights, a range of eight centimeters. Now, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna categorize all of these. We're gonna categorize mean, median, mode, and range into these two categories. One is called measures of location. So these techniques tell us where certain numbers are, as well as measures of spread. Pretty much how far along these numbers go. Now, a pretty easy one that we can start off with is this idea of range, because that tells us how much is between the lowest to the highest number in our data set how far along this data spreads. So this is gonna be a measure of spread. Now for measures of location, let's look at the mode first. The mode tells us where the most frequent value is, where the most occurring data value is. Now this is telling us somewhere in the data that where is important where links to location. So our mode is a measure of location. Now my median and my mean, these two are telling me about where the middle is. Once again, we're looking at the where. Where is the middle of the data roughly? Whether it's the physical middle this being the median, where I write out my data points in ascending order and circle the one right in the middle, or this mathematical process of finding the middle. But both of these are once again, measures of location. They're telling us where the middle is. Median and the mean. Now more specifically, the median and mean, we can break down into another idea, another subcategory of measures of location. These we call measures of central tendency. So pretty much measures of the middle, the center. So we can categorize these four statistical measures as range being a measure of spread, mode, mean, median, and mean being measures of location, and more specifically, median and mean being these measures of the center, these measures of the middle. Now, enough of that. This will hopefully just remind you of the context of these, the strategies for finding them, what we mean by all of these. No pun intended, mean, ha ha ha, get it? Anyway, let's move on. Now we're gonna go through one example and we're going to wrap up. Now, here I have a question which says, consider the ages in years of seven people who are surveyed in a shop. And we have all of our data points here. We wanna find range, mean, median, mode, and then one more question. We're gonna see if another person is surveyed who is 29 years old, what will be the new median? How does the median get affected? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do when I get my data points, I don't like looking at them like this. This is too jumbled up. So I'm gonna arrange these in ascending order. So I'm gonna put my two 12s here, cross them off, I have 15. I have 21, 
I have 31, I have 47, and I have 65. Okay, cool. So, I first want to find A, my range of values, the spread of this. How far, how much space is there between 12 and 65? By doing that, I wanna find the difference between these two. So to find my range, that's the difference between the highest value, 65, whoops, 65, minus my lowest value, 12. When I subtract one from the other, I'm going to get 53. Simple as that, that's all I wanna to do to find my range. For B now, we wanna find the mean of this set of data. So what do I wanna do when I find the mean? Well, I want to add all of the values and then divide them by the amount of values there are. Now let's just count how many values there are. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I wanna add all of these and then divide them by this seven, by the number of values there are. So to find the mean, I'm going to add all of these together. So I'm gonna do 12 plus 12 plus um, 15 plus 21 plus 31 plus 47 plus 65. And I'm gonna divide all of that by the number of values there are, which is seven. And when I do this division, well, this is gonna to simplify to 203 divided by seven, and that's going to equal 29. So 29 is going to be my mean, one of my measures of the center. And if you just look at these values, 29 would sit roughly here. So it kind of looks like, if you drew say a line from the first to the last, it looks like it's sitting roughly in the center. So that is my mean here. That is how I can find my average. Moving on, for question C, we wanna find the median. So, we've arranged the numbers, I just wanna find what is the middle value. So, I want to pretty much just find where is the dead center of my numbers. Well, I have seven values, so my fourth one is gonna be smack bang in the middle because that is gonna allow me to have three on each side. I have one, two, three, and over here, and I have another three here. So my fourth data point is the physical center, this median. If I wrote all these out in ascending order, I circle the one right in the middle. So that's the number 21. So you can see my median and my mean, although they're measures of the center, they differ slightly. This idea is gonna be important when we look at statistics in future years. But have a think about that. This is a pretty curious thing that's happened here. These are both meant to be measures of the center, and yeah, they're roughly around the middle, but they're actually two different numbers. And we're gonna talk about that a lot more in later years. Now, we wanna find the mode. So the mode is the most frequent. So we wanna see which of these numbers happens the most. Do we have any duplicates or anything more? Now you can see I have 65, 47, 31, 21, 15, all happening once, but 12 happens twice. I have two 12s here. So that's my most common number. That's my most. Cool, okay. So for part E, I want 
I've been told that if another person surveyed, if another person is surveyed who is 29 years old, what will be the new median? So I'm gonna write out all these values again, and I'm gonna add this data point of 29. So I'm gonna go 12, 12, 15, um, 21, 29, 31, 47, and 65. So I've drawn all these in and I have added 29 here. I've put it in its, um, in its correct spot in ascending order. So let's just see how this new value is gonna affect the median. Now, I want to find the middle value. So 21 is no longer my middle value. If I want an even kind of spread here, I actually have two numbers now in the middle because I have an even number now of data points. Instead of having, like we did before, one in the middle and then two equal bits on each side, I have an odd number of data points here. Now I have an even number and any time you can try this, any time you have an even amount of data points, you need two values in the middle in order to have three equal portions on each side. So what do I do now? I have, if you look at this, you could possibly think, do I have two medians? What's going on here? I have two medians, but I can't have two medians. I need one median. How could I find the middle then? Because I have two numbers. I want to find the middle, the number in between these two. So I'm gonna write, we want to find the middle of these numbers. How am I gonna do that? Well, think back, we have a strategy for finding the middle of two numbers or the middle of multiple numbers. We have a mathematical strategy. That is the idea of the mean, right? These things cross over. So now I have two medians to find the proper median, the number right in between, right in the middle. I can just average these out. So I can find exact middle by averaging 21 and 29. How can I do that? Well, I can do that by adding the numbers and dividing by the amount of numbers there are. So to find the exact middle, so I don't have two medians, so I just have one median, my median is going to be the average of 21 and 29. So I'm going to add 21 and 29 and I'm going to divide it by two because I have one, two values that I'm averaging. Now this is going to give me 50 over two and then that gives me 25. And we can check this, right? If I drew a number line spanning from 21 to 29, so if I go 21, 22, whoops, 2, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, the number right in between those two, I found that to be 25 via averaging here. Let's just check that. Well, between 25 and 29, I have one, two, three, four values. And between 25 and 21, I have one, two, three, four values again. So this is the dead center. It's right in the middle. 
of 21 and 29. So now you know that if you ever get stuck and you go, oh, what's going on? Like I have two medians, I have two numbers in the middle instead of one, you can find the number right in between by using the mean, by averaging out your two medians. So your new median then becomes 25. So the new median after 29 is added equals 25. So we can see now that when new numbers get added to our data, it changes the median or it can change the median. Have a go on your own, so to do, I want you at home, if you get a chance, to find the new mean after 29 is added. 9 is added to the data set. Have a go on your own. Now that 29 has been added here, try averaging out these, what are they? These eight data points and see if your mean changes as well. And you should, you may or you may not see a change, but the main takeaway here, and we're gonna get into this a lot more in later videos, is this idea that very often, if we add numbers to our data set, our mean and median can actually end up being very sensitive to these new values. What I mean by that is they can change with the addition of new data points. We could see now our median shot up from 21 in our previous question, in uh, part uh, C of this question, it jumped up from 21 to 25. So it's a very different median now that the new value, the new data point of 29 was added. But we'll leave it there. Once again, I've covered this in depth in the year seven series. So please have a look there if this is confusing. But this is how we can calculate the main measures of statistics. These being range, mean, median, and mode. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you in the next video.